Let us get to the uh, the update, uh, and I'll do the, the typical introduction. We are speaking with Mike Tramp, formerly of White Lion. Uh, I hate saying that, by the way. It, it can't be formerly of White Lion. It, it, the, the lion's got to ride again. Yeah, I know. <laughs> I know. I know. Just, just right on the spot from right. the start. <laughs> right on the, well, you know, a lot of people always talk about this reunion tour, reunion tour. Um Okay, but what about just the branding? What about just White Lion? The, was there ever a legal dispute over the name? I mean, could you go out and just be White Lion? No, no, I couldn't. I couldn't. And, you know, the, the, the times that I, that I tried, um, and I think we spoke about it last time, that, you know, I kind of d- regret it, you know, in, in many ways when I look back. At the moment, it seemed like, the right thing to do, but at the same time, it was also a little bit of a desperate move. It's kind of like when you got stall made and you're just standing in the middle of your career. You've done like three solo albums prior to that, and you're sort of a little bit in in nowhere land. And 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 then somebody comes up with the idea. I mean, the idea has been sitting in the back of my head always. Mm-hmm. But then somebody comes up and you follow along with it. And then, you know, before you know it, you're on tour and, and stuff like that. And then, and then when you get out on tour, you as being the one who once were on the big stage tasting the big times, suddenly realize that, you know, playing these songs as White Lion, regardless if, it, if it's with a new outfit, is, is quite, you know, quite damaging and hurtful when you stand there and play for like 75 people in the bar and you feel that you have plenty of life and plenty of music to still give the people. Right. That this is not your final cry and, you know, you, the last roar or something like that. You know, you scrap, you know, scrape the band together and you're going out. So it never felt right to me at all, you know. And, and you know, I've said it over and over, even though it wasn't planned, there is a reason why the band sort of ended. And that, and you know, Vito and I have talked about it many, many times. Why didn't we fight for it? Why didn't the business people that made lots of money off us, why didn't they fight for us? It was simply like one day you're here and the next day you're not. Yeah. And, 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 you know, and so, you know, you and I have been talking about that and, you know, I answer it over and over and over, you know, many bands try to reunite. Some bands should not reunite because, of course, that's not for me to tell them, but sometimes the memories are greater than a reunion. Right. And, you know, why is it that I have, to be brought to this place where I have to sit and tell, you know, everyone out there and including you that I cannot be the Mike Tramp 26 years old, being 54 today. I do understand that there are certain people, you know, at the same age or much older like Kiss or something like that. But the thing is, like, I know for a fact that the front man that I was in White Lion and what I stood for, I cannot reproduce. It's not the reason why I don't want to do it because I just felt a natural change and that I wanted to go in, you know, in a different direction musically or maybe just turn it down a bit. But for me to go out on stage and, and even stand next to Vito and put a microphone in my hand, I feel that I have to try to live up to that show and that front man that I was. Mm-hmm. And, and that, you know, that my knees can't do it is one thing. That my soul doesn't agree with, with what I should be doing is a different story. And, 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 you know, I don't think that it's the entire world that cries for every band to reunite. There are some great tours and, you know, it's not only a few days ago did I watch the history of the Eagles, probably the best documentaries I've ever seen. Mm -hmm. And, you know, when almost an original band get back on stage and they sound almost better, 
then there you can there you can that's an argument right there of 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 why they should do it and bring that beautiful music to it you know when Paul McCartney takes the stage at seven years old and you know with with the band half his age and and does a kick ass show yes and the Stones but we keep forgetting they're legends in a yeah. completely different world than where I came from and I am okay with looking back and, 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 you know, at a few platinum records and some memories and some old tour books and some pictures with Aerosmith and ACDC or Kiss or Ozzy or whatever and say, hey, I made it to the top and I had a great time and, and here I am right now, you know, and I'm also having a good time. It's just a different kind of good time. Yeah. And, and what would a reunion give you anyway I mean, at, at some point there would be an excitement and, and there'd be maybe one tour and one album, but you're right, it might just cheapen the whole legacy because you're not going to be at Madison Square Garden. You're not going to be opening for, uh, what was it, Kiss? Who did you open for? Uh, that I maybe saw we should. <laughs> yeah. 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 You know, no, yeah. You know, it's one of those things. It wouldn't give us anything, you know. Um, you know, if, if if you put me on the spot one more time, I mean, Vito and I could definitely sit down and write an album if yes. we chose to, chose to. Okay, you would instantly have to take, put a different hat on and put yourself in a different world. You had to go back to Jurassic Rock, you know, <laughs> in, in, in reality, and then that. But for us to even think about getting on a tour bus and going out, and again, you know, I'm almost forced to go and 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 admit to almost the the, the world and you know and the internet and stuff again. I don't personally think that would come a lot of people. Yeah, maybe we could hit a couple of you know '80s festival. Maybe we could play a Monsters sure. of Rock sixteen, uh, Cruise sixteen. But besides that, I'll you know I know for a fact you know, the world is not, can survive without this. So I like actually to keep the memories of, of, of Vito and I's last tour and, 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 and playing in a great band and writing some great songs that I still play today. They're just played by me. Right. And they're a little different, but the melody and everything is, you know, nobody's going to get lost. Everybody knows the song the second I stop playing it. Yep. So the fact is, White Line will not be one of those bands. And it's just as simple as that. And, and it, it's one of those questions that just keeps coming up, right? It's got to be annoying. It's like when you see no, I think it's just I think it's just probably just a couple of people on Facebook that really don't know anything else to do, you know, because the majority has grown up with me and, and find, find a certain comfort in the music and the albums that I do. It's not like I started doing jazz. No. I think that anybody that follows me seriously and, and, and listens to my song will understand that this is the guy who wrote Wade and When the Children Cry and Little Fighter and stuff like that. But the sound of my music is the sound of one person. At times there's a band behind, but it's still a, a, the, the sound of one person expressing himself. Right. You know, White Line was, was the sound of an exceptional great guitar player, very, very unique. And then there were me, and then there were Greg and James, you know? And and that's just the way it is. Now, the other thing people always want is this veto update. Do you have any? Have you spoken to him in the last five years? Have you no. e emailed him? Does I mean, has he just dropped off the face of the earth? Is he somewhere with Alec John Such playing somewhere in a bar? <laughs> yeah, well, you would be the one to find out. <laughs> Actually, the, the last couple of conversations that Vito and I have had have been very pleasant. That we have we've changed the subject and kind of yeah. like just really just you know talked as as two people. We've been talking a lot about acoustic guitars, and we've been talking a lot about just something that doesn't put any pressure on our conversation that we actually can call up. I mean, <laughs> last time I called him up, you know, and I says, you know, I says, it's Mike. What's wrong? <laughs> I says, Vito, it's actually okay that I just call you to say hi. <laughs> it's just one of those things. What would be even more okay is if he had him on this show so I could 
interview him because I'd love to do that. But it, it's, I will do my best. I will do my best in hooking that up for that you. That would be great. But it, it's been a, a source of dismay, I guess, for fans that he just sort of vanished. And also, having spoken to you today, I'm hearing there's a happiness when you talk about Vito, whereas in the past, sometimes I felt there was an anger. What, was there an anger, and have you sort of moved past yeah, it? No, 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 you know, I, 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 I appreciate you saying that. I mean, I also had to, you know, I also had to come to terms with, with in reality, understanding Vito's gripe with me going out and, mm -hmm. and, uh, and, and doing Wide Line. I mean, it was called Tramp's Wide Line, you know, that some venues end up putting the poster up, calling it Wide Line is different, but from my side, it was always called Tramps White Line. Mm -hmm. And, you know, <clears throat> you know, he just, he said something to me just, just to, to give a little bit of a background because, I mean, I appreciate that you mentioned that because it is a statement and it is, it is where we are at the moment. You know, he says, you know, when he, if he would be going on YouTube and he sees, you know, a white line, you know, in, 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 in some place and then he clicks on, and there's another guitar player playing, and it says "White Lion," and or or maybe one of his friends says, "Hey, you know, I saw something about White Lion," and then you know he goes in and clicks on a live live show from India, whatever, and there's you know four other guys on stage that he doesn't even know. That hurts, mm -hmm. and it took a while for me to understand that because at the moment when we spoke about those things, I was probably more caught up in that, you know, we were in a legal battle and we both had to to put out money to, to lawyers, you know, to, to go through all that kind of stuff. The more I started realizing that I never wanted to do it in the first place. Right. And the more I knew that I wanted just to go back and, and, and continue with my solo career, the more I understood Vito's stand in that. And that was all that mattered in that. And from that point on, we could then go on and talk about the old days. We could talk about things that maybe hadn't been closed or finished and, and all those kind of stuff. We could actually have a conversation and stuff like that. So, you know, there's a complete truce um, and, and there won't be anything changing that. See, and that's good to hear. And it's also got to be gratifying to finally be able to just stand up as Mike Tramp, the artist, and not always be Mike Tramp, formerly of White Line, Mike Tramp's White... Like, you're now your own artist, and you're your own career, and it's, you know... Yeah, I know. I mean, it's like, obviously, I didn't create that, and, and marketing and, and venues and advertisers haven't been using that from since the dawn of the dinosaurs. And, you know, because it just seems like if people don't get reminded, they forget. I'm positive that you and I are pretty much equal. If we would say that we wouldn't need this kind of introduction, we, the name would be enough. Right. Okay. I'm pretty knowledgeable in most band members and singers from almost any band in the world. Yep. And I don't need it to say, formally off or from because in reality it should say Mike Tram from his mom and from Denmark in reality <laughs> it shouldn't say from white line white line I was in for six years okay I've now had a solo career almost 25 years but you know who's counting <laughs> <laughs> Not me, but, but I didn't actually. It, you know, it just is what it is. It is what it is. But you know, and 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 you know, it it is what it is. And and you know, it's not necessarily like it changes anything. I just I just played Russia two weeks ago, and I went over there and and I did a special set of twenty White Lion songs because this is a place the band had never been. Right. And this was my introduction to that, and I said that to the audience. Today you're getting a special gift from me, and I will play that music. And after that, the next time I come back, we start fresh. <laughs> right. Cut, start with the with the whole career. Um, you're also doing the U.S. tour and an acoustic thing. You're gonna in Vegas. You're gonna be there with Michael Sweet in Ottawa. You've got Rust Dwarf of the Killer Dwarves opening. The other cities, I'm not so sure about who's opening for other stuff. But tell me a little bit about that and. Is that something you want to do more of, or is this something that we're we're done with? This is the last one. Catch it now. 
Well, you know, the, the, the truth of the matter, I mean, this is the third, third uh, you know, of this kind, you know, around the world. And, uh, you know, when I started with Cobblestone Street and then went on to museum, you know, there was a, there was kind of like, it was almost because this is like, the, you know, the, the second trilogy I'm on. The first three soul album kind of followed each other. And then came the Wide Line Adventure. And things like that. And then I felt after that, I kind of had to go back to the beginning again and just reestablish what it was that I in the beginning wanted to do. And I went even further back with making Cobblestone so, you know, rootsy and so, so acoustic that, you know, this is the first step. After that, you can add more. And, um, and this, the, each tour has done that too. And as without jumping, um, I've just finished recording a new album, which will be out in in um, in August. It's interesting enough that USA US tour is the end of the museum tour. It finishes there because I already started the museum tour last August. Right. So that will be where I'm promoting that album. That's where that album will be sold. The new album is a complete band album from first song to last song, okay. a true rock album where that should be. And it's, it just feels right that the third album should be that. And so that will also lead up to as when I start touring on that album and that album comes out, this will be the time when I go out with a band again. Does it have a name? The album will be, will be premiered right now will be called Nomad. Nomad out. There you go. That's a good word for it. As you go from place to place to place, and it's going to be full rock. So we're going to have drums, a, bass, the whole thing. Yeah, it's not going to sound like it's not going to sound like Striper. It's going to be a Mike Tram rock album. Okay, and of course, you, you know the question that anybody's going to ask is: Is it going to sound like White Lion? How does it compare to White Lion? Is it White Lion? So is, is it modern rock? Is it classic rock? Is it just? Hey, oh, that's are, too many categories, man. When uh, I get, you, you know, know see, you know, yeah. those questions are coming, though, right? Everybody has to compare and stick you in that box. I, I, I think that the people who know the, the the previous two albums and know the sound of my tram solo, right, will you know will understand what this album is. This album has nothing to do with White Lion. Okay, but people that have followed me would know who who the singer is and and things like that. Okay. You know, okay. there is you know, I have I have moved away from from, you know, guitar riffs and guitar solos and been concentrating on writing great songs and the sound of a band that's grooving. This is a very adult album and, and things like that, but this is an album that can stand up with, with any other album is, and I can go out on stage playing with any other band at that time because it is, it is just very clear of who the artist is. Okay, and I know that we, we've had a couple of conversations in the past where you were talking about growing musically. How, how does this one grow musically? How are you growing musically over the last few? You know, it, it's a natural progression that you're not, a, in, that, you know, that you don't know is happening. I think sometimes it's just only when you look back at a picture of you two years ago and then compare to see yourself if you've grown, if you've gotten any older <laughs> or something like that. Yeah. It happens musically too. And I think it's really just because of three years touring with an acoustic guitar and playing these songs in a certain way and I hadn't even planned to record a new album, so like that, but suddenly I went out in, in you know, in my, my studio and, and, and I just took out my Telecaster and, and plugged it into a little Marshall amp and I just started playing one day and I says, man, I haven't heard this sound in a long, long time. And before the night was over, I'd already written three songs and I could feel that I was hungry in that way. And over the next couple of weeks, it just, it, I went out there every night and put it together and stuff like that. And then, you know, I said to my partner, Soren Anderson, um, I need a couple of days in the studio. I want to just hear how this sounds. And I went in there and recorded eight songs. And um, what you sort of in a demo way. And we were just sitting there, just, this is clear. And, you know, I, I had even finished the lyrics and it was, it's just, that's just a clear message of where Mike Tram stands on this album. I think there's a very clear line all the way through 
that when the listeners dig into this album, they will re really see that this stands by itself. And, and just like I think Museum made Cobblestone Street being Cobblestone Street, this one will make the two other albums be free, real individual albums mm -hmm. by the same artist in that way. Has the songwriting changed at all? Because I, I know on the last two, it was pretty much just you and, a, and an acoustic guitar, and it was very sort of singer-songwriter. Was this one important to write with the other members of the band or the other players in the band and say, okay, let me hear what this sounds like with a drum, or is it still the same writing process? Oh, no, that, oh, no there, has, there hasn't been one single thing rewritten when I goes into the studio. The song is complete when I go into the studio. Okay. When I went in to record, you know, like the pre-production demo, I wasn't sure if I was going to go with a band or whatever. Okay. It just kind of spoke to itself. And before I knew it, it was clear where I was going. And this was, 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 a, was a, just something that had to happen. And, and I followed that because there weren't a record company knocking on my door saying, we need a new album. I mean, at that moment, I'm a complete free artist in saying, I feel that I have enough music. And I want to write that stuff. And I just follow that. And, you know, the, the when you hear the album and, you know, this album was completed in five days, you know, wow. and we there, there's just no experimentation in it. It's just that I'm so clear on what where I stand and what I want to do that there's no soul searching anymore. The message is clear. The artist has arrived at the top of where he can be from here on you can only just continue with what it is you're doing see that's got to be a great place to be and and it goes back to talking about the reunion tour it's almost why would you want to go back to where you were when you've got to where you can be now where you can be completely free you don't have to worry about writing for radio or writing for a certain sound i mean you must be in a and again i, I use the word uh, for the lack of a better one, you must be in a happy place, just being able to be the artist and not some... Well, yeah, I mean, here, here's a list. What makes a person happy? Because, you know, when I, when, when I was rolling gold and when I was sitting on, on a big tour bus and when I had three sports cars and stuff like that, I yeah. dreaded getting up on stage singing these songs. I lived behind a, like a veil of, of hiding because... I'd actually started out singing songs that in, in, in many ways were just too high for me to, to, to sing. And it, 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 just, it just made the touring m miserable for me in, right. at times, having to live that. So you got the success. You're selling the millions of albums. You're on the tour. You're hanging out with Steven Tyler every night, you know, That's or it's cool. Angus Young and stuff like that, et cetera, et cetera. You're now telling yourself that that is the happiness. Then there's all the other stuff and things like that. So I just come to the conclusion that you can't have it all at the same time. So during your life, you have it in different um, segments. Right. You know, it's it's simply just the way it is. It's kind of like Star Wars, man. You know, you had to wait wait for so long and now they go on it again. So I am at a very, very, very happy place musically. But hanging out, with, hang, hang, <laughs> hanging out with Steven Tyler every night's not a bad thing. This is <laughs> when he was 40 years old. He was a different person. No, but, you know, it, it, it's, it's just sometimes when you speak to a young band backstage and they're out there opening up for you and, you know, they're really, you know, you try to, to give them something real right. to go on with. And you don't want to go, hey, guys, this is 1988 anymore. OK, but the fact it is that, you know, radio and MTV, that w was our road, our stage that, you know, that all bands from the 80s and, and 90s, you know, came out through that. That thing is gone. G-O-N-E, gone. Like you said earlier on in our pre-interview, now it's called streaming. Now, it, you, you, now it's called you know, my music is somewhere out there. You can't see it. But when you were holding up, you know, the Scorpions unplugged, nice booklet right. you showed me and stuff like that. Put it back you know, oh, uh, yeah. It is, yeah. That, you know, that beautiful. Look at you know, all that. We were told, yeah, yeah. It's gr man, that looks, that looks great. You know, it's glorious. We're, we're from that generation 
that wants to hold music in our hands. It's as simple as that, you know. And for an artist to go to write a song, go into the studio, go through the whole process, sit there with a the band and feel the, the vibe of that thing. And then to know that at the end of that machine, nothing coming out, but just, you know, see through thing. Yeah. You, that's not good enough. You need to hold something physical and stuff like that, you know. So, but as a fan, you also need to hold it physically because there's a legacy. Like, you know, I discovered Kiss, for example, at the early age because my brother left the records around the the machine. You know, he left the vinyl. Shame line. on that brother! Shame on that brother! Well, he, Couldn't he, he have left some better music? Well, there was ABBA <laughs> records too, but no, but but <laughs> but with streaming now, you don't have that. Like my daughter listens to music all the time, but her brother will never accidentally pick up anything because there's nothing there. And, and, you know, when I, if I pass away at some point, I have nothing to give to them if it's just streaming. That physicality is more than, you know, it, it, it tells a story yeah. of your life. It's not just to hold it. Yeah, yeah, you're right. And, I, you know, and most, most fans who, who still come to the show and stand there a part of us, we feel the same, we stand for the same. No doubt that we're being outnumbered by Taylor Swift fans. It's just a fact, okay? But that doesn't lessen it, you know, that, you know, you know, I mean, just, just an interesting thing here, you know, when I was trying to say, okay, when does the record company need the master based upon when it's coming out? And, and usually before, how quickly you can print a CD, how quickly you can book, uh, print a booklet. But now because I'm also releasing my music on vinyl, and there are only so many factories making vinyl yep. these days. In Europe, they're in the Czech Republic. Um, suddenly, it's a three-month, you know, um, print-up time. And, and, you know, in many ways, that kind of felt great to know, oh, okay. But the thing is, we can only do what we can do, okay? Yep. And, and I can only tell my fans or anybody just watching this interview or whatever that, you know, I stand my ground. And the day there isn't a stage for me is the day there isn't a stage for me. And I'll still sit and play my guitar mm -hmm. in on my couch or on a chair, anything like that. I, I'm a little bit different than, than, than other people. I'm not looking for glory anymore, but I do like sharing my music. And I do like that people hear my music and, and enjoy it and, 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 you know, because when I record my album, there is a bigger message than just another new album. And everybody who will pick up this album who, or, or, or my American fans who will hopefully purchase um, Museum on the tour will understand that this is not just something that I went in to do. This was a part of me that got put down on this on physical disc. product that you call a CD or a vinyl. Yeah, it's, it's as simple as that. Slice of life, as they say. And of course, the uh, we'll finish with this. Uh, the most important question is, will there ever be a Mabel reunion? Excuse me? Will there ever Pardon? be a Mabel <laughs> reunion? Come on. You don't want to get a with There's a Mabel reunion every time I see the old guys and stuff <laughs> like that. Can... You know, things like that. Yeah, you know? it's a long time, but no... Uh, you know, I'm Anything has a price. <laughs> <laughs> Throw me the money. Um, you know what? There's a bigger chance for a Mabel reunion than there is of the White Lion reunion. Let's just put it that way, okay? That's right. But what both will never happen. Both will never happen. But uh, after the acoustic tour, though, there will be a band tour, a full band tour? Yeah, well, I mean, you know, it, 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 it's, 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 we're kind of covering a lot in this kind of thing because... I will start my European tour on the new album around first week of, of, of September. Okay. The album will be released late August or something like that, you know, and, and, and thereon I will tour, you know, with a band. The, you know, you know, Mike Tramp and an acoustic guitar will always exist. Yep. And I will be doing shows in between. I can... You know, there is one little thing to be said about this thing, and that is that I'm looking more for a bit of the real intimacy with the acoustic guitar. 
And of course, during these tours that I've been doing, at times I do end up in big sports bars with, you know, 20 big screens with hockey, pro wrestling, baseball, basketball, football, videos, reality shows. While I'm standing at the other end, you know, 150 people watching me trying to compete with that. And, you know, this is something that I'm seeing that that's taking me off a little bit. And I've had to kind of redesign the show towards that. But I would like for the acoustic guitar to be something that when you see me sit down with that one and I bring you close into my soul, that's what that should represent. You know, by the way, not I, just somebody going out because he can't afford to bring a band. It's amazing, by the way, you say that because uh, the bar in Ottawa, the Bourbon, they have the big screens, but they always turn them off when the band plays because they want people to watch the band. It, it's a courtesy. So, so, so that when you tell me that other band or other bars aren't turning off the screens, I find that somewhat disrespectful, quite yeah, frankly. But you know what? Hey, listen, man, the bar is cooking, man. There are a lot of people came there to play pool and stuff like that. Yeah. And, you know, Mike Tramp is on the other end. And it's just the way it is, man. I was playing in a, in a place in Sweden where they had a Motley Crue concert at the other end while I was on the stage. I sometimes lost, you know, uh, where I was in the songs. And I just went to my, hey... I guess in reality, this is better than digging a hole in the ground in the middle of the rain, you know, working for the government and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. But even that has a limit. And when I've had enough, you know what, it'll be like Forrest Gump in that scene where he just turns around and says, I'm tired, I'm going home. Yeah. And Mike Tram will do the same. It's as plain as simple as that. Well, as a fan, I hope you don't go home yet. You're, you're still young and there's a lot of good music to come. And Nomad is coming in August. So I'm looking forward to that. And of course, the Peace. tour, I'm going to see you in uh, end of May, I believe. is the it's End of May, beginning of June in Ottawa uh, with Russ Dwarf for the Killer Dwarves. It's going to be a perfect night. He's, uh, he has promised to play a Kiss song for me that night. So uh, it's going to be a beautiful night. <laughs> okay. That's, I'm already looking forward to that, man. You know, it'll be great. Even though I only do two Canadian shows, it's always great, you know. Canada had always been very kind to White Line. We did some big tours out there. So it's nice to say that I just made it across the border. Yep, absolutely. Thank you, Mike. Always a pleasure. And uh, Always a pleasure. And, and hi to everyone out there who was uh, watching this. I hope you got uh, your money's worth. I think they did. They always <laughs> do. They always do. Thank you, Mike. Hold on. Let me just...